let's um let's talk about like your 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 bag of, of tools right when it comes to chatbots on, on the last video what we went through is we talked about what are these different kind of grow tools right so now you you know you've got you've got your chat widget you've got your landing pages you've got your link codes to be able to get someone to subscribe but now what do you what's what can you do once people are are in the bot to actually increase your ability to convert them, right? What are these things? What are what are some of some cool things that you can do to be able to uh, enhance this this convert, you know, this interaction, this conversation? So let's talk about a couple of things. I'm just going to go to a blank one over here so that we can talk about it. So one of the first things that I'll share with you is one thing that you should be thinking about is building your bot. Um, in, in one of two ways, right? Your bot is either going to be, your bot is either going to be a, a personality or your bot is going to be what we call a utility. Now, what do I mean? What do I mean by that? Well, there's two ways that people uh, can use a bot effectively. The first is by creating like a personality. What we've done is we've created and made the bot like a, you know, like a personal assistant of the, um, of the influencer, of the, of the author. And, you know, one of my clients, her name was Shay. And what we did though, is we made her bot name was Grace, right? So it was like, Hey, I'm Grace. I'm Shay's assistant. Um, and the reason that we called her Grace was because, you know, her, uh, our client was really about helping women to be able to do things with ease and to do things, you know, um, gracefully. And so we thought that that was kind of a fun, punny way to be able to do that. And so everything was delivered in the context of that personality. And what that does is it just creates this kind of different engaging experience for, for the user, right? And so the other way though, the other way that you can do it is by creating something of, of utility. And you'll see like what we did with, with the fitness gym is this is something that's a little bit more utility, right? It's, it's, we're not really focusing on the personality of the interaction. What we're doing is we're showing them all of the different tools, all of the different things that we could provide for them right here within this experience. So you'll see here that this one, right? If I'm creating a, a personality, I might use more images. I might use more gifts, things like that. And if I'm creating a utility, what I'm going to do is make sure that that experience is something that's very intuitive, that's very easy, um, that, that is, you know, people are able to find their way around things or people are able to, you know, you see here that with this particular one, we, we tried to, we didn't finish it, but we put in the, um, like a BMI calculator where there's actually a function right here in the bot. And so, the way that you can add value is by creating a tool right right there in the bot. So you've got either your personality or your utilities. And so I talked about it a little bit, but one, one thing that I love is, is galleries, right? And I love galleries because in, in running ads for my different clients, one of the things that I found was that the my best performing ads were almost always right. Like, like there was, I, it's hard to find any exceptions, but almost all of my high performing ads were carousel ads. And every time we ran a single picture, every time we ran a video, nothing could beat <clears throat> the carousel ads. And so what I kind of, you know, uh, hypothesized was that people are so used to scrolling up and down. Right? If you think about it, that's what they do. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. And so when you offer somebody an opportunity to now, instead of scroll up and down, but to now scroll left and right, well, it just creates this pattern interrupt and it just creates this different novel experience. And this might not be, you know, the same forever, but what, what, what you can do is take out the monotony of it being just this kind of back and forth conversation and now you can add some of these visual aspects, right, to your bot by adding in different galleries and adding in different lists. But I really love the, the gallery aspect of it because you are able to create this 
horizontal experience that I've seen to prove really valuable in the ad space. And so I know that these are the same exact users who are clicking on the ad. And so I know that they're, they're going to carry those same kind of uh, tendencies into their bot or into the, you know, into Facebook messenger. And so I really enjoy creating, you know, whenever I need to display a variety of things, right? One thing that we did with like for, for real estate was we gave people the ability to um, search different places. So it's like, this one says LA homes. Well, maybe I might want to put in here like, you know, San Diego homes, right? And, and that way they can search there and San Diego homes or something like that, right? And then after San Diego, I can put in here, I can go in, I can put like Seattle homes. And so if I just want to display a variety of different options and do it in a visually appealing way, right? I can just go grab my image address, right? And drop that right in there. And I can create this visual horizontal experience for my subscriber. So it looks like the the pictures that come up for San Diego homes are so much better than the pictures that come up for LA homes. It's just funny. All right. So, anyways, so galleries, right, are are obviously a, a very just highly effective tool that you can use um, here within your bot. Okay. The other thing that I like to do and I like to talk about and stress is the ability to create custom interactions, right? And so if we listen to something, we actually ask someone a question, right? So it's like, you know, if we ask them what their favorite, you know, product is, right? Or we don't have to make it that blatant, but if we ask them something, well, we can now save that to our bot Right, we can actually save that to obviously last user input. We can save that to choice or whatever. We can just save this here, and then now in our next one, we can say, "So you, so your favorite product is," and then you can put that in there. And so what that does is it just creates this, uh, you know, just just semi personalized experience. And so you can use that with their name. You can use that with their um, any information that they give you. You can use that with their their email, their phone number. And so creating personalized experiences is is another big part of getting people through the funnel. Let's see what time is it. So I'm going to talk about a couple more, and then if you guys have more questions, we can kind of talk about some. Um, advanced follow-up and conversion techniques on the next one. So I think that these are, are helpful too. One thing that I also like is giving people uh, the, an option to choose their own path. Uh, when I was a kid, one of the hit books was called Goosebumps. And one of the kind of styles or, or types of Goosebumps books that came out was a, was a choose your own choose your own path book. And I remember them being so much more exciting to read because I felt like I had a say in the process. And I wasn't just getting this, this scripted, this um, ununique, for lack of a better term, uh, experience, but that I was actually going through an experience that I created that was actually something for me. And similarly with chatbots, you can actually do that by creating engagements in, uh, in your bot, right? Creating different kinds of forms of engagement. Now, what I will share with you is that I have found that on average, a pe people will interact with the bot about two to three times per engagement, right? And on average, will interact with a bot one to two times, okay? So what does that mean? That means that if I get someone subscribed to my bot, on average, I expect them to hit the button like two or three times. Like any more than that, if there's something really, really important, I don't, I don't do it after the third engagement because I know that the vast majority of my subscribers 
are only going to interact with the bot about two to three times. Maybe the bot's slow. Maybe the bot sucks. Maybe they get bored. Maybe their coffee at Starbucks finally right. I don't know, but I do know that I'm only, I only expect about two to three interactions. And so I don't create any, uh, I don't create anything that's too complex um, within those first couple of engagements, right? Now, with that being said, what I have found is that people will interact with a story or interact with an, an engagement up to seven or eight times if done the right way, right? So on average, when I'm just thinking about, you know, some of my real estate subscribers, my, you know, gyms that, you know, gyms that I created for, loan officers, more, all of those things, really on average, the people that come in, they click a couple buttons and then they're like, if they're interested, great. They, we escalate them to the next, uh, you know, sales, you know, um, the next sales, like whatever we're the next part of the sales process. And if they're not, then, then frankly, we, you know, we do our best to follow up with them, but we know that, um, the best ones come within those first two to three interactions. Right. But what I will share with you is one thing that I did test out early on is how long would someone actually go, um, you know, through a, how, how long could this engagement go? And I knew that I couldn't just ask them to just keep hitting buttons because that's going to be, you know, that's kind of silly. Um, and, and it wouldn't actually tell you anything. But what I did find out is that people are willing to interact with a story, like I said, up to seven or eight times. And so what you can do is you can actually recreate this story experience, this choose your own story experience right here in the bot. And if you think about it, right, emails were really great because you could write an email, you could write as, you know, as long as you wanted. And, and a lot of times people recommend, you know, long form emails or these, you know, kind of stories in their emails. And, and that's great. But email is like writing a letter to a friend. And I know most of you guys haven't write, written a letter to, to you know, anybody. But with letters, if you think about it, they have to like sit down, write, like it was like one thing and then they would send it to their friend and then they would hear back like weeks later, months later, right? I remember my, you know, uh, learning about Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin during the Revolutionary War could not get a message to the U.S. It, was, it took him like four or five months to just get a single message to the U.S. because the boats kept sinking. And so if you think about that, right, that level of, of interaction was like, I'll write to you and then you would maybe respond or you would take the time to write back to me. But it was this thing that was a very long drawn out process. What's great about chatbots is that you're able to create that experience as if you were texting a friend in real time, right? And what I mean by that is that when you are texting a friend, if someone goes in and like sends you like, um, let's just say like, like a long paragraph, right? Like let's just, you know, I don't know copy this, like if they sent you all of this in, in one kind of post and it was like, like you got, you know, this on your phone, people would be like, whoa, I'm going to read that later. Like that is not, that's, I, I don't have time for that. Right. So what I encourage you to do is to make sure that you keep things nice and short and sweet. But with that being said, you can now create these different options, right? So what you can do is you can create um, these different, uh, let's put in here, let's put in a listen. You can create these different opportunities for people to take their different paths. So we can do path one or path two. And so by, by people hitting these buttons, they can say, hey, do you want to hear a story? Yes or no? Do you like red or blue? Do you like this or that? And so it allows people to be able to have that opportunity to play a part in it. And that's one big way that you can use these options to be able to do that. And so you just create kind of these different, you know, paths for people to go down. Or what I also like to do though, is I like to give them an option to, to, to continue on, right? So what I do is I, I put a button in there. So I tell them, you know, here's a little more about the story you know, one, one little bit, 
and then I make them hit the what's next button in order for them to see. Because if, if they do that, well, I know that they're engaged. If they do that, they reset the 24 hour limit. If they do that, if they do, if they interact with it, it it's, it's them pushing it on us, not the other way around. And so this, this little, you know, the same kind of thing, what happened next? And you can change this up or like, you know, it could be like, what did you do or whatever it was. But the storytelling model allows you to now take those long form stories that would be that, that you would kind of tell in an email and or in a video or something like that and now be able to break it up. And if you do it like this, it's actually like when you're texting a friend about that crazy story from last night, it, it's a back and forth experience. It's not just someone word vomiting all over you as well. And so I really uh, value these, um, the opportunity for these two. Uh, you know, to offer choices for our, uh, our subscribers.